It's Dustin Wilness. I can smell it. It's in the air, and I smell it. I sm- Do you smell it? Because I smell it. On KTOE. <laughs> are back here on KTOE and uh, joined in the studio today by Senator Al Franken Hi, and Dusty. his uh, son Joe Franken. How are you guys doing today? Doing well. Doing good. I know you're in town for uh, Vikings training camp. and it's our, guys- annual, our annual trip and uh, uh, something we really enjoy. Excellent. I got to mention, uh, I, I'm sure you don't remember this, but uh, when I was starting out uh, years ago, I made an awkward phone call to you when you were doing your radio show for uh, Air America, okay, to, do, to get a news uh, actuality, you were—I think you were in the parking lot waiting to do Jay Leno. But oh, that was a very awkward, <laughs> awkward exchange that we had. Well, wait a minute. Then I don't want to be here. I remember that. <laughs> well, I, I've I never been so insulted in all my life. I'm out of here. <laughs> that sound effect of me walking out. Well, you guys mentioned <laughs> I, I was the one that made it awkward. By the way, well, well, I, <laughs> I appreciate okay. that. But well, you were young. You guys, um, as you mentioned, uh, every year come into training camp, and sadly, this will be the last one here in Mankato. I wanted to get your, your thoughts on that first, and uh, 52 years. I mean, I don't think there's been another team that's been at a particular place for training camp that long. Uh, it's a great tradition. I've always kind of combined this with Farm Fest. Uh, they've always coincided, and I usually go out to Farm Fest and come out here to Man- Mankato and then back up to the Twin Cities. And um, so, yeah, I'm going to miss it. I love the facility. It's beautiful. Uh, I love that sort of the pilgrimage people make from all over here. And uh, Joe comes from New York. He's living in New York City. So he came. He was actually supposed to get here last night. And Yeah, I had, I had a few <laughs> travel issues, but I got up at 3 in the morning central time to, to make it over here. So definitely an important thing uh, to do for every year definitely so do you guys make it to just one one training camp day or do you try to do a couple while no, we, do, we do one day we do one day a year yeah usually we'll come in the morning and we'll watch they do like a morning walk through and then uh, we'll have lunch and come to the afternoon practice and that's usually when they're in full pads and you really get to see sure. all the action so it's a lot more fun well i know joe you're the uh, the expert I've been told on the yeah. bike, so <laughs> he he knows his Vikings. He knows <laughs> he knows all the he follows the draft. He follows training camp very closely and all the the blogs and yeah, it's it, it's a lot of fun to uh, you know follow the team through the year and then come to training camp. And over the last couple of years, I think the with you know Twitter and the evolution of a lot of podcasts, there's a lot more content and a lot more people who can sort of come and create their own content and be able to distribute it. So it, sure. it's really fun just even coming to camp and seeing all the, the writers that I you know follow and see. So it's pretty fun. So just from watching it this morning, can you kind of get a sense already as to maybe what kind of season we'll have? I know last year was uh, not the best. I mean, it, it was, yeah. they didn't miss any field goals in the wild card. <laughs> <so I missed. laughs> well, uh, last, last year was a tough one. Uh, we started 5-0, and oh, and stupidly I – got overexcited and started looking at hotel rooms in Houston, <laughs> thinking we were headed to uh, the Super Bowl and things sort of deteriorated uh, from there. But I think August is always a very optimistic time to be a Vikings fan. Um, and I certainly am optimistic. And I think if you look back at last year, um, the two games against Detroit, uh, we really sort of gave away the game against Dallas. Uh, we should have won that one. So I think even though we finished 8-8, eight and eight, I think we could have been an 11 and, five, 11 and 5 team and been in the playoffs. But just way too many injuries um, between the offensive line, Teddy, Peterson, I, I, just just sure. too much to overcome. Well, I know a lot of people now do the, uh, the fantasy football, and they kind of cherry-pick different teams and different players. But as just a, a straight uh, Vikings fan, uh, is it tough – Every year to get excited, as you mentioned in August, you're you're looking at uh, hotel rooms and then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's not uh, it's not tough to get excited. I actually don't play fantasy football just for the reason that if I did, I would only select Vikings players, which wouldn't be a good way to do it. Um, I I do a, a different thing, which is called the Pick'em League, where you just pick the winner of each uh, game, 
And last year I picked the Vikings in every game, which obviously was not going to work out. But, um, you know. Well, it could work out this year when they yes. win every game. <laughs> it's got to happen one of these times. No, it actually doesn't. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, um, you know, uh, if, if, we, if our offensive line is healthy, yeah. I think that, that's, that's probably the key to the season. Excellent. Again, uh, Senator Al Franken and his son Joe Franken with us here in studio today. You mentioned uh, Teddy Bridgewater. I know he's uh, back after uh, last year's uh, incident and uh, Sam Bradford. And do you know what, as far as uh, the quarterback scene goes? Uh, what yeah, I, I think that's a tricky one. I think, uh, you know, Teddy's still coming back from a pretty devastating injury. And uh, my guess is that if he's going to play at all this year, it'd be towards the end of the year. Um, but I think the Vikings have a tricky decision because they've got Bradford for one more year. They've got Teddy for one more year, and they've really got to decide, you know, do they want to go with one or both and how that plays out, especially with all the cap restrictions. So I, I would not want to be Rick Spielman right now having to make that decision. So what uh, what did the crowd look like up there? I haven't I had a chance to get up there yet, but I imagine since it's the last one, it's probably been pretty crazy up there. It, it, it's been a very very full enthusiastic crowd it's it's a great scene i i you know everybody is happy and uh and it's just a fun scene and it's great to see these kids see these uh see their their uh see their vikings and they're so big these guys some of them if, you know when you're there in person it's not the same as uh seeing on tv you just realize my goodness they're some of these guys, and then some of the guys, you're, you know, the uh, cornerbacks are, are just, you know, they're like normal yeah, they're still people. big though. <laughs> well, I, I <laughs> and know. fast. I mean, that that's another element, which is just the speed when you're watching practice that you can't really appreciate when you're watching uh, a game on TV. Is you just see how fast and fluid these guys are, and really, you know, makes you understand the talent that they sure. have. I'm big, but not fast. So that's why I'm in here. You're built for comfort, exactly. <laughs> yeah, not not for speed. Well, yeah, it's uh, it's sad to see him go, and I know it was such a economically uh, such a great thing for Mankato. But sure. uh, I know Mankato has you know the marathon and a lot of other things uh, coming up, so I'm sure we'll be able to hopefully fill that void. Uh, I I hope so, but I'm going to miss this. I I am going to miss this. It's been uh, a nice part of the year. I mean. Joe will come for training camp and when they're in uh, Egan. So, uh, but there was something, something great about this place. Well, let's talk about uh, the Super Bowl. Of course, uh, whether the Vikings are in it or not, will be uh, at the U.S. Bank Stadium. And I imagine just the—I um, don't even know how long they've been working on it already. But I imagine what goes into hosting a Super Bowl uh, must be uh, must be a lot. It is, and there is actual. Uh, security aspects to that as well and uh, so um, you know very cognizant of that as a senator and um, but uh, it'll be I'm sure Minneapolis will do it really well we we went to the last one right did you come to the Redskins yeah yeah that was the Redskins that was the first football game I ever went to was the Super Bowl last time it was in Minneapolis at the Metrodome and that was the Bills and the Redskins yeah yeah. How old were you? Uh, I was like five. <laughs> but I, I remember—I mean, I remember going to the game. Sure, not a bad first game. No, it wasn't at all. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, Bill Murray emceed a thing, a fundraiser for cancer research at the at the University of Minnesota, uh, w- roasting a madra shot. So okay, and you came to that, and I remember you sat next to Kent Herbeck. Yes, and you were very uh, that yeah, because I was that was right around the when the Twins won in '91 the World Series. So mm-hmm. Herbeck was the first baseman. He was one of my favorite players, along with uh, Kirby Puckett. So excellent. Well, as far as um, the Super Bowl goes, um, what goes into? Um, I guess you have to bid different cities bid to try to get the uh, Super Bowl because I'm sure the economic you know that that brings in uh, probably billions of dollars into the uh, into the communities. Yeah, I don't know how the process. Do you know how it works in the NFL? I know that there is a bid process, and uh, you know, different cities uh, submit. I think the uh, having the new stadium was probably a, a big factor, and and I've I've been in the stadium uh, once. We went to the home opener last year against the Packers, and the stadium is absolutely incredible. And I think 
you know, all the infrastructure that they've done around the stadium as well, I think creates a, a place that can su- support an event like the Super Bowl. I think they're also doing the Final Four at the stadium as well. Um, so I, I think, you know, it's going to be a great, great event. Excellent. Again, uh, Senator Al Franken with us and his son, uh, Joe Franken, here on KTOE. And as we mentioned, uh, the last year for training camp, I think um, today, tomorrow, and maybe Monday or Tuesday is the last day, so people are packing up. But uh, I guess just final thoughts on, on, on what you think as far as the team goes. Yeah, I don't think we uh, saw too many scoops, but you know, I think what my dad said earlier about the offensive line, that that's going to be the big part for the Vikings this year. And if they can have a healthy offensive line and play well, it should open up the running game. And, and you're excited about the... Uh, our our first draft pick. Yeah, Dalvin Cook. Yeah. Yeah, I think Dalvin Cook, who we took in the second round, um, from what I hear, he's been having a really good camp. And, uh, you know, it'd be nice to have someone step in with Adrian Peterson leaving to sure. bring in another running back who could be a Hall of Famer. Excellent. Yeah, well, it'll be uh, great to see uh, where they go. And, uh, Senator, I want to. I don't want to ask you too many political questions. Oh, go uh, right it's... ahead. I'm used to those, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wanted to get your thoughts. I know noticed on Twitter as of late uh, a lot of talk about net neutrality and the importance sure. of that. Sure, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, if you want to just uh, discuss that a little bit, because I don't know if a lot of people realize exactly yeah, what's well, going on. Yeah, well, net neutrality is is the concept that all content on the internet be treated neutrally, <laughs> be be treated the same, and it has been the basic architecture of the internet since its beginning with DARPA that. Uh, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, which was in in the uh, Defense Department, and uh, basically, what what does that mean? It means that when uh, you go online and you want uh, content, it means if you uh, want to get news from Fox News or from the New York Times or from somebody's blog post they all travel to you at the same speed. And so that, uh, create one that is good for freedom of speech and for information, but it's also good for innovation and commercial reasons. I'll give you an example. Uh, before YouTube, there was a thing called Google, Google Video. And uh, it wasn't very good. And these three guys... Um, in San Mateo, California, over a pizzeria, developed YouTube. And they competed with YouTube. And because you got the content from YouTube as fast as you got it from Google Video, you had the chance to compare them. And YouTube was better. And so Google bought, a couple years later, bought YouTube for about $1.6 billion in stock for these (laughs) three guys over the pizza shop. And that's like so much of the innovation that happens. And, you know, uh, we had a victory in 2015 when uh, the FCC sort of codified net neutrality the way that the courts had said they had to, which is invoking what's called Title II of the Federal Communications Act. And basically that's saying that uh, the Internet is a telecommunications uh, technology, which is what it, what it is, uh, because you can make phone calls over it, you watch TV over it, you, it, it is. And that means that the FCC can regulate it, and that means that we can preserve net neutrality, which we have had all along. And the reason this needed to be done is some of the internet service providers, these are the huge companies like Comcast or Verizon or AT&T, were talking about having a fast lane and a slow lane. The fast lane would be uh, something that you had to be paid to be on. So in those days, Google Video could have been on in the fast lane, and the cost of it would be passed on to you sure. because you know Google Video would charge you. And uh, we never would have had um, we never would have had YouTube. We would have had Google Video, and all the innovation has happened when content has flowed to you at the same speed. So there was this talk of creating a fast lane, and businesses. There really 
no businesses other than the ISPs, the Internet Service Providers, the Googles, the uh, Verizons, the uh, AT&T, now because of wireless, it, they had any, <laughs> they would not, they're the only ones who would benefit from uh, getting rid of net neutrality. So net neutrality is a crucial issue in so many ways. And now, under President Trump, uh, the FCC has a different composition. And the chairman of the FCC, or the guy who's going to be chairman, Ajit Pai, wants to undo uh, the, the ruling that was made by the FCC previously and upheld in court. Um, and, so, and this is it's very important that people um, make comments to the FCC and say, no, preserve what, what's there, what, uh, preserve net neutrality. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, once you start going down that road and uh, maybe some information gets uh, cut off and you only get certain uh, feeds. Uh, yes, and that's part of it too, right. Definitely. Amongst, uh, you know, the stuff with Trump and the Russians and the health care, I mean, a lot of this kind of stuff maybe uh, gets swept under the rug a bit. Cause yeah, so I think that's too on. bad. You know, there's so much focus on the Russian investigation uh, in some places that I think the Russian investigation sort of has two parts. And one part is... Uh, what did Russia do to interfere with our election, and how did they do it? And let's prevent that from happening again. That's like one really, really important part. Now, part of the way they may have done it is to uh, maybe they colluded uh, or the Trump campaign colluded in some way or not. But let's find out, and that's to me, that's what the special prosecutor, uh, Bob Mueller, is, is doing and, uh, I mean, there is some role by Congress, by the House and Senate uh, Intelligence Committees, and I'm on the Judiciary Committee. We have some role in that. But mainly, I think our role, uh, the role of everybody is to prevent this from happening again. And Mueller is the one who's going to decide whether something criminal happened. And I have a lot of confidence in him. Bob Mueller was un uh, unanimously confirmed uh, to be uh, the director of the FBI twice. He, uh, you have a 10-year term, and after he uh, it was about to uh, finish his 10-year term, uh, he was extended for three years because we needed to at that point before Comey was uh, confirmed. But, but you have to understand, this guy, uh, a former Marine in Vietnam, um, a public servant, uh, for almost all of his adult life, man of incredible integrity. Uh, he, he's the one that should be determining uh, whether there's some kind of prosecutions to happen. And meanwhile, I think we need to be um, focused on uh, things like health care, things like infrastructure to get people working, uh, things like getting... When I say about health care, getting prescription drug costs down, I have a very comprehensive uh, bill to do that that incorporates the ideas of a lot of other senators, um, make the uh, exchanges work better uh, on the um, in, in the Affordable Care Act. I think, and I'm, I'm kind of hopeful that we're going to be doing that. I like Lamar Alexander, the chairman of the Health Committee, senator from Tennessee, and uh, Patty Murray is the ranking member from Washington. I'm on that committee. I, I think we will work together to uh, now that we've had this uh, attempt to repeal and replace go down. I think the best thing to do is to, to shore up the exchanges, get the costs of uh, pharmaceuticals down, and then address the other problems that we have in our healthcare system. So, uh, but we have to be working on so many different things, and one of those is. Uh, the infrastructure, I just talked to uh, a Nicollet County uh, Commissioner, um, uh, Jack Kolars here, and he was talking about not having enough money to just repair the roads and, and build roads in the county. So uh, we, we have to do, we have to work on our infrastructure. We have to make sure that we uh, create are creating good jobs for people. Uh, a, a good solid middle class people aspiring to be in the middle class can be in it but you know I grew up in the 50s 
uh, middle class kid. My dad didn't graduate high school. He was a printing salesman. We grew up very modestly, two bedroom, one bath house, me, my brother, and my parents. I felt like the luckiest kid in the world because I was. I was growing up middle class um, in in the 50s at the height of the middle class, and I felt like I could do anything I wanted to do. I could, you know, and I don't think a lot of kids, not not every kid feels that way these days. And um, I want to, I, I, Paul Wellstone said, we all do better when we all do better. And I, I, I believe that. Excellent. Yeah, it's, um, it'll be interesting to see. I know you've got a lot of uh, stuff on your plate, as you were just mentioning, and but I appreciate uh, you guys being able to stop by today and Anything else? Uh, I know you just had a new book out, but anything else maybe uh, in the works or anything else? You want to yeah, I have this book, uh, uh, Al Franken, Giant of the Senate, by Al Franken. And um, it's uh, the title, uh, 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 let's put it this way. I asked the reader to decide for themselves whether or not I am a giant <laughs> <laughs> of the Senate. It's meant very uh, tongue-in-cheek, and I talk a lot about uh, how I went from being a comedian to uh, being a senator, uh, that trip, and then what it's like for me to be in the Senate. You know, the question I get asked maybe the most is, is it as much fun being a United States senator as working on Saturday Night Live? And the answer is no. Why, why would it be? <laughs> but uh, it's the best job I've ever had. And it's the best job I've ever had because I get to work on um, improving people's lives. And uh, that's a great job. When you, when you get something done, my first bill got service dogs to uh, veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan with post-traumatic stress disorder and, and other invisible wounds. And that was very, very, uh, that was something that I couldn't have done as a comedian. Sure. Well, now as a senator, this will be my last question. Can you get uh, Stewart Saves His Family out on Blu-ray at some point? <laughs> well, thanks for bringing that up. Thanks for remembering. I uh, did this movie, Stewart Saves His Family, and it tanked at the uh, at the box office. You remember that, Joe? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Our family remembers that. But I was very proud of the movie, and it's used very often in at rehab still, and especially in the family program, because it was really about the family disease of alcoholism and of addiction, which is uh, unfortunately going to always be current. Sure. And um, but I'm very proud of that movie. Um, and every once in a while, some, God bless you, Dusty, for bringing it up. <laughs> uh, someone will say to me, "That's you know one of my favorite movies," and it reminded me of my family or that kind of thing. And um, it's gratifying, uh, you know. This is as good as if, you know, if I got out there and threw a pass to Kyle Rudolph today. Sure. <laughs> Hearing well, that. Again, guys, I know you're uh, heading back out there, so I appreciate you coming in today. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. Dustin. Thank you. Senator Al Franken and uh, Joe Franken here on KTOE. Stay tuned. We'll be back after this.